For this project, we'll need some textures for the sun, earth, and moon. You can get them from the websites in the description below. You'll also need a background image, and you can get one from the links in the description below. In my code editor, I put my textures in my images folder, and I made a folder for the earth, moon, and sun, and their textures are in each one. And I have a background image here. In the beginning, I just have a basic 3JS scene with my scene, camera, and render. One of my lights is a point light. It is placed at the origin and will act as sunlight. And I have my orbit controls. So now we're going to start building our mini solar system. Make sure we create a texture loader so that we can load all our image textures. My background image is just a regular high resolution image, 6,000 by 3,000 pixels. My background is on a giant sphere outside of our solar system. So I made a sphere geometry with a radius of 2000 and applied a mesh standard material and then passed in the geometry and material to make my background object and added it to the scene. For the sun, I'm using this texture and I'm going to use the emissive map and emissive light. It acts as kind of like a glow. So for my mesh standard material, I'm making this emissive color a yellowish color and I'm setting the emissive map to the image texture that I just showed you. And I'm setting the emissive intensity to 1. And then I'm creating a sphere geometry with a radius of 109. The width segments and height segments are the next two arguments after the radius. And the higher these two numbers are, the rounder your object will be. Now we're going to work on our Earth system. The Earth system will contain the Earth, the Earth's atmosphere, axis line which is a line that runs through the north and south poles and the moon so these will be stored in the object earth system it will be a new three group and i'm going to declare some consonants i'm going to use a few times r will be the radius s will be the number of width segments and height segments of the sphere geometry and tilt is the amount of axial tilt so it's kind of like the angle that the earth is tilted and that's 0 0.41 radians so let's start with building our earth so for the Earth, I have three texture images, a bump map, which we'll use to show heights, a color map, which shows colors, and a specular map, which shows shininess or reflectivity. And I'm loading them in these three objects here. Then I'm creating my sphere geometry using my radius, R, and my width and height segments, S, that I declared up here. And for the material, I'm making a new three mesh fong material. And then I'm just passing in my color map for the map, my bump map for the bump map. I'm setting the bump scale to 0.5, and the higher the number, the greater the bumpiness. For the specular map will be my earth spec map, and I'm setting the shininess to 0.5. The higher the number, the shinier it will look. And I'm setting the rotation on the z-axis to the tilt variable I declared up here. And then I'm adding it to the Earth system, not to the scene. I'm going to add the Earth, the Earth atmosphere, the axial line, and the moon to the Earth system. And then I will add the Earth system to the scene as a group. Now we're going to create the Earth atmosphere. The Earth atmosphere will be a sphere one unit larger than the Earth. It's going to be a semi-transparent sphere. It's just going to show the clouds orbiting around the Earth. The texture for my clouds looks like this. I'm creating a new sphere geometry, one unit larger than the Earth, with the same amount of width and height segments as the Earth. And then I'm creating a new mesh fog material. And for the color map, I'm using that image of the clouds. I'm setting the transparent property to true because I am changing the opacity to 0.5. And I'm changing the rotation on the Z axis to the same amount of tilt as the Earth. And then I'm adding the clouds to the Earth system group. Now I'm going to create the Earth axis line. So this line will run from above the North Pole to below the South Pole. So here I'm creating an array of two points. Each point is an endpoint. And then I'm creating a new buffer geometry using the set from points method from these two points. Now I'm creating my line. Uh, so I'm passing in the geometry that I created up here and a line basic material. I'm setting the color. I'm setting the transparent property to true because I'm changing the opacity to 0.5. Then I'm setting the rotation of the axial line to the same amount of tilt as the Earth and the atmosphere, and I'm adding it to the Earth system group. Now for the moon. This is what my bump map looks like, and this is what my color map looks like for the moon. So I'm creating a new sphere geometry. It has a radius of 5, and for my moon material, I'm making it a mesh standard material because it's not very shiny. It's rock, 
and my color map will be my color map and the bump map will be my bump map and I'm setting the bump scale to 0.5 I want it kind of bumpy but not too bumpy the higher the number the bumpier it is and then I'm setting the position of the moon this is the only thing I have set the position of. Everything else is being set at the origin. Because when I make the Earth system group, I want the Earth and the atmosphere and the axial line to be in the same position. The moon, I want to be at a position in its orbit. And then I'm adding the moon to the Earth system. And now I am adding the Earth system to the scene. So let's make our shadow map. So I'm enabling shadows for the renderer. The point light can cast shadows. And here I'm setting the map size of the shadow map and I'm setting the near and far clipping planes so the shadows will appear between these two distances from the shadow camera and here I'm just setting which objects can cast and receive shadows for the earth atmosphere of the earth and moon let's work on our earth orbit around the Sun so the earth's orbit will be an ellipse curve so I'm creating a new three ellipse curve the first two parameters are the center of the ellipse the next two parameters are the x radius and y radius of the ellipse and the next two parameters are the start and end angles inside the ellipse then I'm just getting 200 even pieces of that curve and storing them in the constant points and I'm using the set from points method to use those points to create a buffer geometry and then I'm creating a line basic material setting the color transparent property and opacity and then I'm passing the geometry and material to create a new line and I'm rotating the x-axis of the orbit by minus 90 degrees so that the y-axis is up and down and adding it to the scene so now we have the earth orbit so we just have to move the earth system on that path for the animate loop I'm going to create some constants the loop time will be one that's the amount of time it takes for the earth to orbit the sun the earth orbit speed will be 0 0.0001 but you can change that so the moon orbit radius is the distance between the middle of the moon and the middle of the earth and the moon orbit speed is 80. our animate function does three things it moves the earth around the sun it moves the moon around the earth and rotates the earth earth atmosphere and moon around its axis let's move the earth around the sun first time is the amount of time earth has spent going around the sun so that's going to be performance now that's a time in milliseconds times the earth orbit speed so you can make the earth go faster or slower by changing this value t is the modulus of time divided by loop time and since loop time is one the modulus will always be a decimal of time divided by one and the decimal tells me how far along the earth is in its orbit around the sun right zero means it's at the beginning half point five means it's halfway done values range from zero to one and just loop over and over so from t i can get the position of the earth in orbit on that curve path by using the get point method so at a given time in that one orbit i am getting the point on that curve and i'm putting it in p so p is a 2d vector it's going to have an x position and z position so i'm just setting the X position of that point on that curve and making it the Earth system X position and I'm taking the Y position of that point on that curve and setting it to the Z position of the Earth system because in our world Y is up and down not left or right or back and front so now that we have the Earth system moving around the Sun we have to move the moon around the Earth to move the moon around the Earth all I'm going to do is orbit the moon around the Earth system position because the earth system position is orbiting the sun to do that I'm going to use the unit circle so I've made the moon orbit circular and by getting the cosine and sine of the angle from the center of the orbit I can get the X and Z position of the moon on the edge of that circle so that's all I'm doing here except I'm taking the cosine and sine values and multiplying them by the moon orbit radius and that determines the size of the moon orbit and then I'm rotating the bodies on their axis so I'm just taking the rotation Y properties and I'm adding a value to each one and there we go